Good morning and welcome to worship this morning wherever you are watching. It is a good morning because we live every day in God's presence, in God's world, and God's world is full of promise and hope. I'm the Reverend Rob Stoner and together with Heather, we have the pleasure of leading you in worship this morning from the Corner Uniting Church. As part of this morning's worship, we will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion. If you wish to participate when we get to that point, you may like to gather some bread and wine and have them in front of you. If you need time to gather those things, pause the video now and then come back to us when you are ready. And our opening prayer. The work of the Creator is visible. Let us respond with praise. The example of Jesus is apparent. Let us respond with obedience. The wind of the Spirit is blowing. Let us respond with joy. The Word of God is calling. Let us worship in spirit and in truth. We acknowledge that we are on the land of the Ghana people, the traditional custodians of the Adelaide Plains. We are awed that they celebrate the religious significance of place, plant and all living creatures, and that care for the earth is implanted in their law. We honour them and also delight in the sacred in our midst. We pray that in the power of the Holy Spirit, we might work together for reconciliation and justice in this land. This morning, we're going to be talking about parables. We'll say more about what a parable is and isn't a bit later. But most of us are aware that the teaching of Jesus in the Gospels contains many parables. So to get you thinking, here's a question. What's your favourite parable? You may like to pause the video for a moment and reflect on that on your own or with those with whom you may have gathered. So have a think. What's your favourite parable? Today's reading from Matthew 21 verses 33 to 41. Now listen to another story. A certain landowner planted a vineyard, built a wall around it, dug a pit for pressing out the grape juice, and built a lookout tower. Then he leased the vineyard to tenant farmers and moved to another country. At the time of the grape harvest, he sent his servants to collect his share of the crop. But the farmers grabbed his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. So the landowner sent a larger group of his servants to collect for him. But the results were the same. Finally, the owner sent his son, thinking, surely they will respect my son. But when the tenant farmers saw him son coming, they said to one another, here comes the heir to this estate. Come on, let's kill him and get the estate for ourselves. So they grabbed him, dragged him out to the vineyard and murdered him. When the owner of the vineyard returns, Jesus asked, what do you think he will do to those farmers? The religious leaders replied, he will put the wicked men to a horrible death and lease the vineyard to others who will give him his share of the crop after each harvest. Our reading today begins with the words, Listen to another parable. Earlier in Matthew's Gospel, he records that Jesus told them many things in parables, and indeed that without a parable he told them nothing. Depending on how you count them, there are about 40 recorded parables which Jesus spoke during his earthly ministry. So what is a parable? A word or a story? or a sign which points to a deeper mystery than that which is signified by its surface meaning. And in Jesus' case, every parable's deeper mystery is about the nature and working of God and God's kingdom or God's reign. Robert Farrar Capon has written three books which give a whimsical and refreshing view of Jesus' parables. He divides them into three groups, which develop in depth and meaning 
in parallel to Jesus' own developing ministry. The first group he calls the parables of the kingdom, of which the hallmark is the well-known parable of the sower. And Capon says that these early parables demonstrate that the kingdom of God is Catholic, that is universal, it's everywhere, that it is a mystery, that it grows mysteriously and unseen, but that is also actually present in our world and our time, and it calls for a response in the midst of a largely hostile world. So it's Catholic, a mystery, actually present, but calls for a response. The middle group of parables, Capon says, are parables of grace. Parables like the lost sheep, the good Samaritan and the prodigal son. Capon says that the touchstone of these parables is death and resurrection. Because it is only by dying to self, dying to our notions of goodness, dying to our belief that somehow we can earn God's grace. In dying to these things, we open ourselves to be recipients of God's free, undeserved and unlimited forgiveness. The final group of parables he calls the parables of judgment, including today's reading of the parable of the wicked tenants and others like the king's son wedding and the sheep and goats. These parables of judgment are the ones that we've been waiting for, where the goodies get their reward and the baddies get sent to eternal damnation and serve them right. But hang on, says Capon, it may not be that simple. These parables, he says, really demonstrate that God's judgment is based on inclusion before exclusion. And that the kingdom of God is inclusive of us all every last one of us, unless we choose to not be a participant in God's great party of life. So much to think about in all these parables, and there isn't time to explore them all at depth this morning. But next week I'll expand on some of these ideas as together we explore the parable of the king's son's wedding. But these are only the spoken parables of Jesus. Remember my earlier definition of a parable that it is a word or a story or a sign. Because much of what Jesus does, maybe indeed all of that Jesus does in between bursts of teaching can be seen as acted parables. Events like feeding the 5,000, stilling the storm and walking on water, placing a child in their midst, his healing miracles, some at least of his healing miracles, and then towards the end of his ministry, the triumphal entry on Palm Sunday, cleansing the temple, washing the disciples' feet, sharing bread and wine at the Last Supper, and finally his own death and resurrection. Each of these and many more are signs which point to that deeper mystery of the nature and working of God and God's kingdom or God's reign. So we might well expand on what Matthew said that I quoted earlier to say that Jesus told them and demonstrated to them many things in parables and that without a parable he told them or showed them nothing about the mystery of God's reign. The whole of Jesus' life and ministry is parabolic, so that every time we read or listen to words of Jesus or a story of Jesus in action, we need to be asking, what is the deeper mystery of God and God's ways being revealed to us here? So what does this mean for us? Two things I want us to ponder. The first is that shortly we will celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. Now a sacrament is a bit like a parable in that it is a visible and outward sign that makes present some deeper or hidden mystery. In Holy Communion, the outward sign of broken bread and poured out wine 
makes present to us the mystery of how Jesus' death and resurrection opens the way to our grace-filled forgiveness and acceptance by God. So as we share together in bread and wine, don't try to understand what it means. Just let God's mysterious presence fill you afresh with grace and love. The second thing to ponder is this. If the whole of Jesus' life and ministry was parabolic, then surely the life of his followers, his disciples, needs to be parabolic also. For those of us who believe that we live in God's presence here and now, every word we choose to say and every action we choose to take should point to that presence of God within us. Our lives are parables of what it means to be Christian. I know what some of you are going to say. I'm not perfect. I'm not a very good Christian. I'm a bit scared of what that means for my life. But don't worry. God knows and understands our fears and insecurities. And how we let God deal with our fears and insecurities is another sign itself of the mysterious working of God and God's ways within us. Listen to another parable, says Jesus at the beginning of today's reading. And now Jesus looks at us as we go and says, See another parable of my presence. That's what Jesus says to each one of us as he accompanies us out from here this morning. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is to be made ready for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith or you who have little, you who have been here often or you who have not been here for a long time, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, not because I invite you, it is our Lord. It is his will that those who want to meet him should meet him here. Now, let us hear the story of how this sacrament began. On the night on which Jesus was betrayed, he sat at dis supper with his disciples. While they were eating, he took a piece of bread, said a blessing, broke it and gave it to them with these words, this is my body broken for you. Do this to remember me. Later on, he took a cup of wine saying, this cup is God's new covenant sealed with my blood. Drink from it, all of you, and remember me. So now, Following Jesus' example and command, we take this bread and this wine, the ordinary things of this world, which Christ will make special. And as he said a prayer before sharing, let us do so too. Christ be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We thank you, loving God, that Jesus calls people of faith in every age and place to break down the barriers which separate people, to relate to each other with humility and respect, to share kindness with every person, to struggle to bring justice to life in every place, and to welcome all people to this feast of life. We thank you that as we approach this table, no matter who we are or who we have been, 
no matter what our confusions or how deep our doubts. We thank you, O God, that Jesus Christ lived in ways which revealed you to be a God who calls us on to life which is greater and grander than we have known. And so we praise you with the faithful of every time and place, joining the whole creation in the eternal hymn. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. With one voice, let us share together the prayer Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us, us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver, deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Welcomed at this table, we offer our gratitude that the Holy One who is living water and bread of life invites us here again and again to be strengthened, nourished, sanctified, renewed, refreshed and made whole. In joy we come. I ask you now to have your bread and your wine or grape juice before you in cupped hands. As the elements of our meal are blessed. And if your bread needs to be broken, do so after me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, present with us now, through your acceptance and grace we are welcomed. Through your life and death and life again we are renewed. Spirit of love and wisdom, encircle us now in these gifts of bread and wine so that we know your love and understand the reign of God in our lives. Healing, forgiving and making us whole. Loving one, may we become for you your body, loving and caring in the world as you love and care for us in this meal. Amen. Among friends gathered around a table, Jesus took bread, broke it and said, this is my body, broken for you. And later on he took the cup of wine saying, this is the new relationship with God made possible by my death. Take this, all of you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. We will eat our bread first, then drink the wine. Pause the video if you need more time.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your life in our hands. Now we put our lives in yours. Take us, shake us, remake us. No longer is what we have been important. It is what with you we can be starting now. I invite you now to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we go to our homes and our work this coming week, we ask that you might enliven us with your presence. Open our ears to hear what you are saying to us in the things that happen to us and the people we meet. Open our eyes to see the needs of people around us. Open our hands to do our work well and offer help wherever it is needed. Open our lips to tell others the good news of Jesus and bring comfort, joy and hope to their lives. Open our minds to discover new truth about you and your world. Open our hearts to love and be loved, forgive and be forgiven as you have shown us in Jesus. Create us afresh to be parables of your kingdom's presence. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. And a blessing as we go. May you know the presence of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit going before you to create the path for you to follow, living within you to shape you and guide you, surrounding you with unending grace and love today and always. Amen.